Yesterday, the president was in Mbara at the launch of a factory he believes will add value to the extraction of tin. Here, he expressed frustration with those who fail his value addition initiative. I banned all the exports of unprocessed minerals. Let the minerals stay in the ground. They have been there for millions of years. If the present leaders are stupid, they can't see what, how to do it. Let them stay there. When, when, when more intelligent people come, they will, they will, I will not be part of the crime of stealing people. In his missive, the president cited problems that he has encountered in proposing value addition in cotton, milk, bananas, tea and coffee, among many other agricultural products. When I insisted on the, on the processing of milk, <laughs> the vets told me that no, but Nyangwere cannot, cannot look after freezing cows. They can't. I said, why not? I said they can. It was a big war. So I sought the views of some economists on why this remains a problem. Is it the investors who are fronted to implement value addition? So it shouldn't be hand-picking or discriminatory. It should be open. And when we talk of uh, private, private sector-led economic growth, you're talking about the whole private sector as a whole, not just hand picking penet to come into coffee, penet in tea. No, it doesn't work like that. Additional value requires cheap and patient capital. Okay? Do our do, do, do people who open up some of these value addition factories, do they have enough do they have access to cheap capital? Is it patient? Is it long term? Or is it the products that are chosen for this initiative? Uh, the products, of course, if you're drunk, it depends on those that fetch a lot of money on the international market, for example. So if you're drunk, but much of the attention has been given to, you know, coffee, uh, milk, but this should be cutting across because you have to diversify. If you look at the cost of production for these industries, is it favorable? Cost of power, skills of the people that I'm going to employ, are they adequate? If it is farmers that are going to, su to supply to me, if I'm a uh, sorority fruit factory, they're going to uh, supply to me mangoes, are they going to provide me the right mangoes? Do they have the right extension? Or whether the general strategy itself is flawed? It's much more than opening factories. You need to have markets. You need to, look to know where you're going to sell products. You need to have a solid production base. Now, uh, you're going to be in an, agri an agricultural uh, country, you need to make sure that you have solid productivity, actual productivity. You need to make this entrepreneurial environment very conducive to both local and domestic, uh, to both domestic and foreign investors. And you can start this by actually clearing the bureaucracy you have in place. You know, governance issues, fight corruption. You know, it takes a lot of time, a lot of money for one to actually acquire a license or a certificate. So how should the president proceed if he wants to ensure value addition as a measure that adds to employment and export revenue? If you want to add value, I think the, it's much more than coming up to commission a, a project. It's, it's, it's more of making sure that all these different parts of a puzzle, they speak, this coordination, as the institutions working, the institutions that are supposed to, 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 to collaborate some of the things, are they working? Is government funding enough research in agriculture, for example, to make sure that, you know, you have access to, to, to cheap raw materials and then you can supply for a long time. It remains to be seen if any of these measures will finally be adopted or the president will continue to express his frustrations with those who do not understand his initiative.